Hello, unstoppable real estate investors. I'm Rayana Starr, and I'm a strategic business mindset and habits coach for real estate investors. And on my podcast today, I have Ken Sykes. And Ken is just an extraordinary man with a really interesting background that lends itself nicely to his career as a real estate investor. So I'm not going to really get into a big introduction because I want to actually ask him to share about his story. So Ken, tell us a little bit about what, you, what you've done in your professional life, in your careers before you became a real estate investor, because I think it's pretty valid and lends itself nicely to the background for becoming a real estate investor. Great. Yes, that is absolutely true. As a matter of fact, um, let me give you a little backdrop of my of my um, my experience before I became into real estate in general. Um, because actually, before I became a real estate investor, I was a licensed real estate agent of ten years. But we're gonna back up from there. Um, I spent like almost close to twenty years. I'm telling my age, unfortunately, um, as a um, director in healthcare. Um, I was a traveling director, and what I did then was. Um, it kind of corresponds with what I'm doing now. I kind of went out and restructured uh, issues when they were about to lose their account. And I had to go in and restructure issues. I traveled all over the United States with um, HHS and Airmark doing that as a traveling director. And um, then, of course, I got tired of, of uh, dealing with grown folks that understood the job before they took it and didn't want to do what they needed to do. Now, that, I, I knew that inside joke. But I then moved into becoming a real estate agent um, there uh, with Keller Williams. And at the same time, back then, uh, when you were allowed to do both ends, I was also a loan originator. So I kind of did that because I wanted to help the unfortunate. And back then I majored in B, what they call BNC papers. Again, I'm telling my yeah. age, I majored in BNC paper. And so while my colleagues was just doing a paper and was kind of downplaying the fact that I took the time out to work with the less than fortunate. Um, I was proud of that. And I got a lot of sleep because I've heard and stories about a lot of people have been extremely happy, relieved because they, I, I helped them do something that they thought they would never be able yeah, to do. Yeah. You help people person. buy homes that, um, right. It was more difficult for them to qualify right. for the loan. Yeah. Yes, it was. And it was a lot of work, a lot of late nights, but it was rewarding. It was rewarding. Yeah. And um, so we took the initiative, just the major in BNC paper. And uh, with that being said, I, I did become one of the number one, one of the top real estate agents um, with that entail with, with that, as well as one of the, um, the most successful loan officers under the circumstances of just dealing with BNC paper. Um, then after that, I left the industry for a tragic in my life. I left the industry and I returned back to being a director for health cares. And then back in 2018, 17, I returned back. And this time I returned back as being a real estate investor. Um, I, I even went to Spectrum's class to renew my license, completed the class. But then I decided when I was getting ready to do the state exam, like, you know what? It was a guy in the class that was a real estate investor and we, we was talking and I'm thinking, oh, well, you know what? Um, I think that's what I'm going to do. And so I ended up become uh, working as a real estate investor, wholesaler slash investor, and I'm uh, very successful. And the, the thing about it was, again, we're going to refer back to when I was a real estate agent. There's a lot of wholesalers that just don't understand the process. And um, so, all right. So before you get into that, like, like yeah. okay, so great background that would really lay a good foundation as a real estate investor. And right. let me ask you, um, where did you get your? Did you do any formal education as a real estate investor, like invest in Fortune Builders or Pace Morby or someone yeah, else, you where you learned? Because that's very different from the retail right. side of things and from very different and from conventional lending. And so yeah. how did you where did you learn well, you to know, become a real estate investor? What you just stated was very true. I mean, as a real estate agent, 
and trans uh, uh, transitioning to uh, uh, real estate investors, as even though they sound like they're similar, they're different. And uh, so there's a lot of learning. So I went uh, I went with uh, Astro Flip with Jamel. Um, oh, I learned, Jamel, yeah. Jamel Damji. Okay. Exactly. And I learned a lot there. And I, and I, and I also tend to several other, um, you know, when like I was affiliated with the uh, the big dogs here in Texas, uh, the real estate, um, Texas Real Estate Commission, Commissioner, I, I, I went with they, through their classes. Um, and but those were the two that I really learned, got all my learning from. And also, I also worked with Pace Bowlby. Okay. So did so, you do his subject two group? Yeah, I did do his subject okay. two group. I, I didn't complete yeah. it, but I did the majority of it. And okay. matter of fact, one of his right-hand person is, is a part of my team. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. He and what I love about Pace Morby and Jamil and Brent Daniels and all them is the community they have built is so phenomenal. Yes. And it really is. And I like how down to earth and casual they are, yes. especially Pace. And they yes. just make it fun. They're very wow. dynamic. Awesome. You, you, you're among good company. I have this yes. saying, yes. if you yes. want to fly yes. like an eagle, don't hang out with turkeys and you're flying That's with right. eagles. You're That's flying right. with they, eagles. They're a bunch of great, they're a bunch of a great team. They're a great team. And you can see there's, there's, that's, not, there's, that's not phony. That's not a put on. That is how they live. And that is how they communicate. So and that is how long, how long have you been wholesaling? I've been wholesaling now um, since 2018. So about four or five years. And nice. uh, so, yeah, I don't do as much wholesaling anymore. I, I more or less work with new wholesalers because I'm also, I also have a major dispo now. Okay. So you, you did wholesaling and now you're helping new wholesalers. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Are you like great, great. mentoring yeah. them? Yes, yeah, I mentoring a lot, a lot of new wholesalers. Um, what I do because once I became a uh, major dispo, it kind of gave me the insights as to why loans are not solid, why you're not, why you're not deals. Um, a lot of information that I didn't know even when I was a wholesaler. Um, so I knew, and I know of a lot of other wholesalers that's not aware of the importance of making sure or knowing how to structure a deal. And the thing about it, they don't know how because every every investor or every uh, uh, this will have their, a, a, a separate type of buy box, and and because they don't understand the buy box, then there's some general um, um, concerns in all buy boxes. So I try to get them to understand in general what determines a solid deal, and I try to get them to understand to take their emotions out of it. Yeah, and. and you know, what, what, you know, you're hinting around is, you know, reverse wholesaling. If you start with the buyer in mind, right. And if, if newer wholesalers, the acquisition wholesalers worked with Dispo wholesalers, they could learn a lot about the business yes. and now they have buyers. And if, if they have the, if, and I coach people on this too, is Great. as a wholesaler, your greatest asset is your buyer's list. And Absolutely. if you really want to be successful as a wholesaler, work with a handful of buyers, um, you know, big buyers, you know, the people right. that are wanting to acquire volume. And right. basically consider yourself their personal shopper and as go that. out there and look for the deals your buyers want rather than you find any old deal and Absolutely. then you try and schlep it on the streets, which isn't hard to do right now because everything sells fast. Right, but right. I like that. So tell me a little bit about your dispo business. So you're not even going out and initiating the deal. You're just working with other wholesalers to right. bring the deal to you and then you find the buyer. Right, right. And and, okay. and, the, and the thing about dispo, and I'm, and I'm including... Uh, the dispo company that I, I affiliate myself with, along with even Keekly. Um, and I'm not trying to advertise for them because we have our own dispo. But the point in case is, is that they have, we have vetted buyers that we have, that we are accustomed to, that we work with. And it makes it a lot easier for new wholesalers to come through the avenue. And I'm not knocking, you know, uh, doing your own research and finding your own buyer. No, you're, you're but, right on. You're right, right. on. I think, newer wholesalers 
struggle with all the pieces and right. the, the weak link is they're they're so busy trying right. to find the deal they don't realize well you need a buyer right right you know? and, and, and they're and not connected you, enough so they don't know exactly how to there you go there you go you that right on the buyers list yeah and then that's the thing they can rely on with a bona fide um, uh, major dispo because we are connected and, and, and we are more or less, once we, once we get the wholesaler to understand the criteria of the buy box, our chances, in the, in to be realistic, is in about like 95%. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and but to, to know that, but here's the thing. They have to come in, I have to train, they have to come in with tough skin because they come in, oh, this is a deal, I do what's a deal, you know what I mean? And I look at them like, and, and it hurts me because I was there, it's right? A, no, it's not a deal. Let me, <laughs> and so are you educating them? You're breaking the deal apart and saying, all right, let me, look, I don't mean to knock the wind out of your sails, but let's, let me teach you so that right. you can apply this and learn. This is right. why it's not a deal, okay? Exactly. You bring in, a, you didn't build enough hold time in or hold costs, or you forgot right. to factor in the financing costs, the closing costs. You, you know, you said factor- something right there that's, important they that is what they forget to fight to, to get the filter in every single time the financial part like the holding the the cost the holding that costs and the closing costs exactly close the cost and, and in, in a lot of cases the closing cost consists of they have to be able to put it back on the market and that's another six percent and all that comes into that financing and they that don't even come close to their, their, to their thinking they just go with the 70 percent arv Minus repairs. That's it. And yeah. And, 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 right. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah. depending on where you at, it's not even 70%. It can be 65%. Depends. It can be 80%. It depends on where you at or who you who you're gonna present it to. And uh, they don't know all those things. And they just come in and say, Well, it's 70% of the ARV and minus minus repair, you know, I means that's the what 30k and yeah, this the male is formula isn't enough because there's <laughs> yeah, other that's right. expenses, right. That's right, and then you have to tell them it's not a deal, and you have to break it down to them. As you as you just mentioned, this is why it's not a deal. Excuse me. This is why it's not a deal. Oh, that was my. This is why it's not a deal. And they, they at some time I found out, I, I learned that they said okay, when they go elsewhere, and they try it, and then they end up coming back, and because they don't know, I watch it the whole thing, right? And because they don't want to believe that. They don't want to believe it. And here's another sad thing about it. When they go to another entity, the other entity doesn't break it down to them. And they just like, you ever go to a new car dealer and, or, or any car dealer, they have you sitting there for like hours and hours and hours. Because I did a, a thing with Honda. Um, I went and applied for them at one time. And I only worked for like two days, right? But when I went to class, what I learned was this. They know half of the time that the uh, consumer, the the, the 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 consumer is not going to get approved, but they're willing to sit them there for hours just to gamble with their loans through a, ver- a variety of different lenders, right? But they know off the bat. Well, sometimes that's what a lot of um, other entity does to these new wholesalers. They come and they say, you know, you have you, they, they they post them, they post them on on um they post on the different um sites, the different uh, group sites. And first thing everybody says, oh, I'm interested. I'm interested. Inbox me, inbox me. And you come to find out they're all wholesalers, right? And they all say that they can do this and they can do that. And they all give them false, you know, they all give them false um, hope. Yeah, uh, the, the, pro- the problem is, you know, that, that you're vocalizing is that it's all about them getting a deal and just making money instead of, serving and the best wholesalers, right. the best wholesalers in my opinion concierge the deal they they schmooze they 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 are the they are communicating they are the rainmaker of the deal they're they're putting time and effort into getting clear with the seller right getting clear either with the dispo, dispo wholesaler or the end buyer they're talking right. title company they're the one really finessing the deal and serving everyone involved. They're not just like, oh, I got this here. 
Right, exactly. Because sometimes I have actually lost, well, I want to use the term, lost the deal because when I'm dealing with a seller, I'm like, well, you did, have you tried this? You know what I mean? Learning their reason for the selling, of course. And um, in some cases, they were like, no, I didn't try that. And, you know what I mean? I'm like, well, to try this. You know what I mean? This may help. You might not even have to do this, so, especially the pre-foreclosures. You might not even have to do that. Let's, let me see if I can help you do this. And some cases, they went that direction and they were successful. But I slept because I helped. I assist them to get out of the situation without having to go in that particular direction. And that means a lot to me because uh, a lot of my videos that you may see are called Keeping It Real. And, and Keeping It Real sometimes can, um, can, can, can do um, some damages as far as you're not making the income. I want to use damages, but it can do that because Keeping It Real is like let them know how the process really goes. And um, so that's another story, but a lot of my- Yeah, being honest people. with people. And right. so you're not just dispoing, you're actually mentoring newer wholesalers right. and teaching them the ropes so that they are effective. Very wholesalers. effective, right. right. Yeah. And you know what else too, what, I, what, what the issue is too sometimes, and, and because I am a prior real estate agent, and I'm gonna tell you the truth, when I was a real estate agent, I didn't like investors. I thought investors was the worst person, worst people on earth. Okay. So I'm here to say that. And then when I learned the business, I'm like, oh my God. You know what I mean? I like this, right? Now I get it. You had a different like, perspective. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, and and so what I did a video called um stand ten toes down. What I meant was that was some wholesale, see, this business, wholesalers are getting downplayed a lot. Um in, in a lot of in a lot of areas, and and I work with a lot of real estate agents, but then there's a lot of real estate agent gives them that bad that bad rep, and 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 it's because they don't know, like I didn't know, and and what happens is um, wholesalers what uh, to be a lot a problem a lot when I get calls that they don't display who they are, and when they go into the deal, they go into and I'm an investor. Right, so a lot of the, the um, homeowners, those sellers, is assuming that you are the one who actually buying the property, and this is it's, it's kind of rough, kind of tough, but it's realistic. And realistically, you are the wholesaler, and some wholesalers just afraid to use that terminology, and that they shouldn't be. It's time for the wholesaler to stand ten toes down because when you let's use a, let's use a buying a car for for analysis. When you go buy a car from a new dealer. You pay twenty thousand dollars for the car, but the dealer got that car, that person that car as a wholesale. That's how the dealer got it. Then you got another entity in there. You have the bank that actually who provides the loan, so they got the interest charges. So all that adds up. So when you go buy a car, you buy a car through a bank, and it was you you you, you bought it at a retail versus the wholesale. Well. You could kind of narrow that down and use that same analysis when you purchase, when you're doing deal with a home. When I go to do an offer, I offer a 200K home, I offer 120,000K for it, but I sell it to an investor for 130K. It's safe, you just knew the numbers. Now, this is really happened. So a wholesaler learned, I mean, a, a seller learned that by seeing it in um, when, they, when they marketed it, when they advertised it, and called and said, Hey, they ripped me off. They only paid me 120K for that property. Now I see them advertising that property for 130K, 140K, whatever, right? And they, they was terribly upset, but they didn't understand that is the process. Most major, most major investors don't go out and solicit the property. They rely on a wholesaler to get the property and bring it to them. That's why we have in buyers. That's why we go to in buyers because they rely on the wholesalers to bring them property. So with that being said, I think that everybody needs to come together and understand and stop downplaying wholesalers. Their job is very, very crucial to this business. And, 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 and they, they are the ones who make the investors successful and make them help make the investors, the investors wealthy because investors don't have the time, a lot of the big ones, to be out searching for um, uh, distressed homes or whatever. And they rely on wholesalers, but we falsely advertise ourselves to the public, and then a lot of that.
without getting into it where a lot of the misunderstanding coming from. And so they feel that they've been um, downplayed or, or low ball. And that's not the case. It's a lot of stuff going in when we submit an offer. Now, yeah, I, Grant, you know, um, I really subscribe to and coach my clients on, like a lot of people are almost ashamed that they're new. Okay, they're yeah. new investors and I'll, and they'll say, well, what should I say to this seller, blah, blah, blah. And I said, there's no shame in being new. That's right. Just be transparent, be, exactly. be authentic, be honest about who you are and what you're doing. You don't, right. there's nothing to hide. You're not doing anything wrong or illegal. Just say, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a new real, real estate investor and I'm, you know, this is something I'm doing as a side hustle. I right. really love it. Um, and I'd love to help you sell your house. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, and I even tell people when they're talking to sellers, don't go into this big hip slick elevator pitch. With right, people. right. Don't right. Want that. We don't you want know, that. it's right. like, just talk to people like Brent Daniels talks about TTP. Yeah. Just, it's not about you He's good anyway. Too. It's about you helping that person over there on the other side of the phone. What can you do right. for them to help them move on with their life? Right. And being honest with them and transparent. And that's part of building rapport is they're just a human being. You're a human being who wants to help them if you can. That's all it exactly. is. That's all it is. That's all it is. Now, you know, granted, we, we all, we all, I, I like to say, keep it real. Just like in anything, there are some wholesalers and, and slash investors that do kind of go overboard. That's in any business, um, even in the healthcare. Uh, they, they, you know, what I mean, that's in any business. So that comes with the territory on any type of business. But then there's the majority of the wholesalers and investors are good people, and and they and they and they are honest people. The most of them that I've came in common with. Okay, uh -huh. and so. Um, I hear a lot of people say this about Jamel, some, this about Pace Moby. I know of them and I and I work with them and they are good people. They are good people. Um, they're they're, uh, they're my right hand, his right hand man, Jab, have came and got me out of a lot of situations with a sub two. And when, and his, I, I said that to bring to this point. When he spoke with him, I, had, I was on a conference call. When he spoke with the sellers, he was very transparent. He was giving them other avenues that they should try. And he said to me, and I'm on the other phone, like, no, 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 no. I, I was new. I, was, I didn't say it to him like that, but I was, we were texting really, but I'm using the term phone. No, you know, we, we, we're not going to get this deal if we say that. He said, no. He would text me back. We, all this is a text. No, just sit tight. Just listen. Just wait. And what he was saying was, allow them to hear or to venture off on other, uh, uh, other options. And because at the end of the day, if our option is the best, it's going to be a slam dunk. And yeah. sure enough, they call them back. They call us back about uh, less than 24 yeah, hours. Yeah, if you week. give, if so many people want to fill the silence with, with talk and right. you want to have the conversation flow and you want to actually poke at their pain and give them something to think about. Right. Right, yeah. and 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 that and that's yeah, that comes into uh, develop a relationship, and so you can Building develop a relationship. Yeah, you're Building not trying to get them under contract on that very first call, so right. that removes a lot of pressure from you and from them. Right, it does. Yeah. It does, and and and, and it takes and it takes some patience, um, but the the re, it's, but the reward is tremendous, and. Um, so you have to address you have to address it that way. And I know a lot of new investors, or new wholesalers are excited and they 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 want to make that quick dollar and everything of that nature. And I understand that, but that's why I try to get them to calm down, calm down. Let's let's let's, let's take a deep breath. Patience, and, uh, grasshopper, wax on. Yeah, right, wax right, off. right. So that's right. You know, and it's hard. And 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 it's hard. Believe it, it's really hard to. Um, now, I know we had said earlier, like, you know, we use the terminology and I do this for a side job, but let me tell you something. The hardest, the, sometimes, the, some, for me, sometimes the most difficult ones 
and and I and I and I still welcome them in because it's sometimes you have to come in. A lot of times you have to come in as a side hustle before you can get into it full time. And a lot of those are the ones who I try to uh, mentor more because they are want to go on, on their full time job or whatever, and they try to get this done. You know what I'm saying? So I try to help them out. You know what I mean? Tremendously. Those are the ones I try to make sure they understand. Rather than wasting your time, get with me. Let's analyze the deal, and let's make sure it's solid. But um, and it's okay. Uh, it's okay to do it as a side hustle. Some feel like they got to get into a full time, and that's okay too. But make sure you are not desperate for the money, because if you're desperate for the income, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. Well, along and that's the way a in. terrible place to be coming from is to be desperate about the money. Right. Um, I, I don't, it, you know, I've had, I have clients that other coaches had told them to quit their job and go for it and do this full time. And I said, I would never coach someone because even rock stars, the top five percenters that are making it in the business, they weren't successful right away. They weren't successful with their first deal. They weren't like a rock star in their first right. year. This business, it takes time to it get there. Time. And you can't time. be operating from desperation. You can't be you can't. operating from, I've got to make a deal work because then everything you're doing is out of desperation and it's for you Absolutely. because you need the money. It's not for you because you're providing a service that helps right. people. Right. That is crucially important. That's crucially important. So I encourage them, you know, if you don't, and, and I know this goes a little bit against the grain because they said no money down. And, but I encourage them if they are going to enter this or here, make sure you are financially in a position to do so. And I'm not yeah. saying that you got to use your money uh, to purchase the property, but all I'm saying is you got to be financially comfortable. You know what I mean? Where, you know what I mean? Where, you know, you can support yourself without relying on the next deal. And, and I want, they need to come in, in at that status, being comfortable. And whatever comfortable is for you may be different for me, might be different for the other person. Yeah. But generally we have to be, we have to be somewhat comfortable. And um, and you have to be comfortable to even hear um, the, the the structuring. You have to be comfortable to hear, cause you, I can talk to you all day long, but if you ain't comfortable, you ain't hearing nothing I'm saying. All you want to do is get this deal done you know what I mean? And so I have had those um, um, quite often and uh, still got one or two now. And I just try to just get eager them to beavers. Eager beavers. Exactly. That's what you call it. That's right. And uh, but it, it comes to it comes territory. And, and I see them. I see them becoming successful, though. Um, and I'm not just saying because I tutor them. But no, but like uh, I see them become successful. I see them backing up. I see them looking at looking at the deal, looking at the, looking at the whole thing as, from a global perspective. I see that's happening now. And I, when I see that happen, I say to myself, man, I wish somebody would have did that for me. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, and I did. It saved and, you so much time. It so Ken, me. if you had a rooftop message, something that you'd like to shout for, to the rooftops, to new wholesalers, that they would hear and heed, you know, that they would take to heart, what would that advice be? Um, that advice would, would be this. Um, being an investor is really, is a great industry. All you need to do is have clear understanding of what it takes. Have clear understanding from A to Z on what it takes. Realistic can, expectations. Realistic, real, yeah. realistic expectation, yes. If you can do that, just keep that in mind. If nothing else, get a clear understanding on what it takes to make it, to make a clear off, a good offer, get a clear understanding on what it takes to make sure you understand a solid deal. If you can do that, don't regardless. If you can settle down and just do that, you will become successful and you will be able to sleep better at night. That's a guarantee. And yeah, just, you, you need to be. That. You need to persevere and be resilient and tenacious. This isn't a get rich quick business. No, it's not. Most people take three, four, five years before they start to hit their stride in this business. The way I right. like to explain it to people is you have invested in 
a, a college education to learn a whole new profession. Plan right. on it taking three or four or five years of you learning the business, you doing it, right? you know, before you get to a point where it could possibly support you. Be okay right. with it being a side hustle. Take the time to learn. Exactly. And then exactly. learn and implement while you're learning. Otherwise, you right. get overwhelmed with all the education and you don't know where, right. to, where to start. So exactly. can I? Yeah, go ahead. And, and one last thing, too. Also, one of the things that I did um, now that I did back when I was a real estate agent, when I became a loan originator, I got involved with being also uh, a financial um the uh, platform where I can also help some of the um, new wholesalers that wants to get into flipping. I can help them there too. And that, and I, and I just started doing that and it's, it's phenomenal. So I want to be able to help in all areas. So I just kind of want to throw that out there too. So I can do, I'm, I'm on a platform now that I can also help them with their financing to provide for um, their deals. Okay. So you're mostly helping new wholesalers by dispoing their deals for them and training them about what a deal is. And then you're also helping them with finding the financing if they want to actually rehab a deal. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Ken, I really want to say thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be on my little podcast my, and, and have this interview with me. I really appreciate it. I'll be posting it in my, yeah, I'll post it in my group today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This is Ken Sykes. And if you're a new wholesale investor and you need a mentor to dispo your deals, find the buyers for you, he's a great guy to reach out to. You can reach out to him in the comments below this video. And if you want to learn more about him, his link to his website or group. Do you have a link to a website or a group? Yes, I, I do. And I I I have um, the Ken Sykes Senior is my link to my Facebook, and um, they, they can just basically get me there. I do have a okay. link to my website, but I can get I can get that to me as a as a um, contact. Okay, so um, just let us know if you want to reach out to Ken. Just put comments down below, and I will tag you in this post, Ken, so that you'll see what's going on when people Perfect. are responding. Thanks Perfect. everyone for joining us for and this thank episode. You of Unstoppable Real Estate Investor Mastering the Secrets of the Top 5%. Thanks so much, Ken. Hang Thank on you. a second. Hold on. Let me just stop the recording.